episode of Discovering Western New York. I am in the beautiful town of Westfield, New York. I'm actually in Barcelona right now, uh, which is just down the street uh, from the actual physical town of Westfield. It's a really beautiful place, and we're gonna show you the Barcelona Lighthouse, I'll show you the beach here, and a great crafts fair that the YWCA put on. It was just about the perfect morning drive as I was headed down to Westfield that afternoon. It always surprises me the amount of people from Western New York that don't really know about this magical little place. Its history, the wine trail there, and the overwhelming beauty of the geography. As I made my way past the many well-preserved historic homes into the quintessential all-American town that I have so lovingly deemed Westfield U for its, shall we say, overly gregarious retired population, and the fact that to me, this entire town reminds me of those amazing fictional college towns in those old mid-century Disney movies. Well, except there's no college here, and this is a very real place. And like any place so charming, of course, there just happened to be a large arts and crafts fair put on by the local YWCA in the town square. So you knew I had to stop and check it out. And as much as I wanted to stick around, I couldn't stay long as daylight was quickly burning and I had an agenda on my own a little further outside of town. Barcelona Harbor encompasses a rocky shored beach, the Barcelona Lighthouse, the actual harbor itself with a modern boat launch ramp, and a little street that runs parallel to the beach that has a few restaurants and a fishery. The harbor is located just north of Westfield off of Route 5, or you can take exit 60 off the I-90 as the thruway exit puts you practically at the harbor itself. For a few centuries, this harbor was a launch site for people traveling deeper into North America. Over time, it became developed as a commercial fishing harbor as we soon learned from our friend Chris, whose family had been commercial fishing the harbor since the 1940s. They're actually in Barcelona for history used to have all oh, about three or four fish houses. It did? Yep. Well, because at that, in that day and age. Yeah, there was like, a lot more commer commercial. Commercial right. was what the harbor was built for. Okay, so it was built for commercial fishing. Commercial fishing, yep. Um, yeah, I think there was actually 12 boats that fished out of this harbor at one point in time. Were there really? Yep. Well, like, are you the only one left? Uh, there's two of us. Um, three licenses. My son has one also. One of my favorite quotes of all time is by William Morris. He wrote, Nothing useless can be truly beautiful. And yes, yes, yes to the hundredth on that one, William. Whenever I encounter a beautiful tiny harbor such as the one at Barcelona, or even the equally beautiful one up in Pulteneyville, just east of Rochester, I'm reminded of this quote. For as much as these harbors have now turned mostly recreational, at one point they mostly served a deeply pragmatic purpose. And being from such a deeply blue-collared, hard-working, pragmatic town such as Buffalo, New York, nothing makes me happier than what I call purposeful beauty. The type of beauty that can only come from something being well-loved and well-worn over decades or even centuries. And there aren't many things in this world that to me are more beautifully loved, worked or worn than small fishing harbors. It's what drew me to New England the moment I stepped out of the car in 1998 that set me off on a journey of discovery that I'm still on today. And what more could you want from a harbor like Barcelona, you ask? Well, how about a one-of-a-kind iconic lighthouse? So I just walked about a quarter mile up the street. Now I'm at the Barcelona Lighthouse. If you've ever been through this route, of course you've seen the lighthouse, but what you haven't seen is inside. Let me just uh, read this a little bit before I say, I don't want to misquote this. Sure. The interior staircase is wooden and it's anchored to the tower walls and a single uh, wooden central support beam, which is this piece right here, this support beam here. Right. And uh, the number of steps to the lighthouse, to the light platform is 50, 50 feet, 50 steps. Okay. The base diameter where we're standing is 22 feet. Yeah. Um, this beautiful flagstone The construction floor. is native rough, rough cut field stone with a lime based mortar. Nice. Just, you know, actually, I may have said 40 years, but it's only 1829 to 1859. That's only 30 years. Wow. That's nothing, no, really. I mean, lighthouses no. aren't used for hundreds of years. What a beautiful little archway, well, too. Well, that was changed. That was uh, added last year. They were having bricks fall out, but they made a, uh, they vaulted it. For taller people. Wow. It's so mm -hmm. beautiful to see the stonework. Mm -hmm. I know. Uh, as you look up, the detail and the texture of the stone. And think of the 
storms that have happened. I mean, every winter there are bad storms that oh. never fit, caved in. No, it's, yeah, and this is just mortar and flagstone, fieldstone, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just... Well, it must have an incredible base, though. Yes, I mean, in uh, order to withstand. If you put this much weight on that much dirt, you're gonna, it's gonna sink. And it's gonna tilt or shift, right. right? But they must have put a stone foundation in here that we're not aware of. And the, the like, I love the stairs, that you can see the it, stairs. Yeah, they're, yeah. And they're very pretty in a photograph. A lot of people like to... Oh, it's awesome. ...capture that. Isn't that cool? Mm-hmm. What a neat job. That's a nice, you? you know, that's a nice way to spend your Saturdays, right? <laughs> I like it. It sure is. So why Barcelona? Well, the answer's kind of behind me. There's really almost nothing like this, you know? This goes back to when the area was first settled. It's been largely undeveloped. It's been largely untouched. It's an absolutely transcendent place. It's free, it's isolated to a degree, and I mean that in the best way possible. It's a really well taken care of, loved place. And that's what I talk about a lot on this show. You know, love where you live, take care of it, be proud of it, do what you can to make it the best that you can. A lot of us, for one reason or another, are in the place we're in, so why not make it the best we can? And I think that's what they've done here in Westfield. Yeah, it has the Welch's history. Yes, it has this beautiful fishing harbor. And geographically, it's been blessed with a lot of good. But in the end, it's not about that. It's about what you make of it, right? It has this feel to it. It's really hard to describe. If I had to describe it, I'd say it reminds me a lot of the Cape. A lot of Acadia National Park, our harbor. It's a really special place. That's right down the road. And that's the whole point of this show. It's about finding the places, the people, and the things that we really don't know. And if we do know them, maybe another aspect that we don't understand, we haven't seen enough of, and really needs the exposure.